there's something attached to my penis. That's a catheter. It allows you to go to the bathroom. If it's causing you discomfort, Nurse Stephen can adjust it after the examination. We're almost done. Now, can you tell me who the President of the United States is? Um, Bush. Can you tell me President Bush's first name? No. Any nausea? No. Dizziness? No. Wait. I mean, should I feel nausea and dizziness? It doesn't appear to be any serious damage, but you may have a slight concussion. We're going to need to keep you away through the night as a precaution. Stephen will be with you, but I'll be in periodically through the night to check on your progress. All right? All right. What? So, shall I adjust the device for you? The what? The catheter. You said it was causing you some discomfort. No. No, it's, it's not bothering me. Listen, uh, you don't have to be nervous about it. Remember, I am a professional. I know, I know you're professional, but it's not bothering me, really. Okay, well, perhaps I can do something else for you. Are you hungry or thirsty? I'm a little thirsty. Okay, well, I'll only get you some water then. Is that enough? You want another cup? No, that did it. Okay. By the way, you've taken good care of yourself. Excuse me? You look good. I hope my negatives are okay. Every everything else is replaceable. So you're a photographer? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Well, are you on assignment for a newspaper or a magazine? <laughs> Fuck no. Well, then what do you take pictures for? Art. Oh, so you, you like sell your work in art galleries and stuff like that? Sometimes. That's why you're traveling around, right? Yeah. I, I'm doing this series titled America's Lost Highways. Well, do you, do you have some kind of grant that's funding your work? from the Visa Foundation. You mean Visa awards grants to artists? Yeah, as long as the artist agrees to pay the grant back with 18% interest. Oh, well, it's gotta be real important work for you then, right? We'll see about that. I only left Washington a few days ago. Wow, you're from the capital? I was, but I officially moved from there when I began this series. So, y you don't have a home? Not at the moment. Are you in some kind of trouble, Mr. Donnelly? Get lost. I mean it. Oh, come on. I'm going to call the cops. Get out. What? Come on. I mean it. Get out. No, I'm just an artist who can't catch a break. Well, maybe I should expand that a little and say that I'm a person who can't catch a break in general. Especially the last three years. I mean, the last three years, it's like I've been the victim of a voodoo play. <laughs> a voodoo play? Yeah, like there's this underground theater company somewhere staging this savage improvisational comedy. And every fiendish twist they create on stage actually happens to me in real life. Have you spoken to anybody about this at all? I don't have the resources for a therapist. Well. We have a 
travel all night together. And, you know, you could talk to me if you like about what you've been through. And I'm, I'm no therapist, but sometimes it helps to talk about all of your problems with complete strangers. Actually, you seem kind of familiar to me. I do? Why is that? I don't know. I wish I could say the same. Why? Uh, I don't know, I guess. You just seem like some guy, somebody that someone else might want to be acquainted with, that's all. Well, you shouldn't say that until you've heard my story. Okay. Well, what is your story? When did this uh, voodoo play, as you call it, begin? It all started on the streets of Baltimore. You're not really gonna hit me with that, are you? Shut up, you fag! Hey. My God, you were assaulted. Oh, you see that now. Well, yeah, how else could I see it? That I ran from a group of 12-year-olds? Oh, gee. But you could have been killed. And besides, 12's not so young when there's 10 of them. It wasn't so much that, as that I didn't want to have to hurt any of them, which is what I would have had to do if I didn't run. In fact, I think that's what caused you to lose faith in me. What do you mean, Mr. Donnelly? It's why you left me, damn it. Deep down inside, you want to love a man who possesses more innate aggressiveness. Uh, Mr. Donnelly, um, are you feeling dizzy? No, no, no. Don't sidetrack me with that concerned shit. It's why you left me. Just be honest about it, for Christ's sakes. Mr. Donnelly, listen, just relax. Uh, I'm going to go get the doctor. Hey, I don't need a doctor. Hey, get back here, damn it! Oh, man, he bought it. <laughs> this is Rajkolnikov, and I'm dying. I need you to comfort me, or by my own hand, I'll die. I'll die! Mr. Donnelly, Mr. Donnelly, can you hear me? We caught Mr. Donnelly. Hey! Oh, hey! I'm sorry, Mr. Donnelly, but it is critical you remain conscious. Now, can you count to ten for me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Can you tell me what state you're in? Ohio. Athens, Ohio. Good. And can you tell me the city and state in which you reside? Actually, Doctor. Please, Stephen, not until I'm through. What Stephen is trying to say, Doctor, is that I don't live in any town or city at the moment. Oh, you're homeless. No. I'm simply traveling between one phase of my life to the next. I see. Well, clinically speaking, your general awareness seems to be clearer than just ten minutes ago. So in that case, I'll stop back later to check on you. Stephen, may I have a quick word with you out in the hall? Mm -hmm. Doctor, I swear I did nothing to set that patient up. Yes, Stephen, I believe you. After speaking with Mr. Donnelly just now, I am convinced his mental state was probably askew even before this accident. But in order to keep him awake, I'm afraid you're just going to have to play along with his fantasies. Certainly, Doctor. Up to a point, that is, Stephen. I don't want things going overboard again like with that lacrosse player. I'm going to kiss you over and over. That will never happen again, Doctor. I hope so, Stephen. So is there anything else I can get you? Some more water or something? Actually, there is something. What? I need to know if you're still attracted to me. Mr. Donnelly, you need to realize that I'm not the person that you keep referring to me as. I know that. But before I even started my Baltimore story, you said that I seem like somebody a person would want to be acquainted with. And I'm wondering, do you still feel that way about me? Listen, if you're just nervous about me adjusting the catheter for you... My dick is fine. I just need to know if you're attracted to me. Are you? <sighs> All right. All right, I knew it. You do like me. Listen, I am not going to touch you unless it falls 
within the guidelines of professional behavior, of course. Of course, this is nothing lewd. What I need, what I'm asking you to do, is pretend to be her. When I'm telling you the story of the last three years, I need to talk to you as if I were talking to her. But what, what do you expect me to say? Nothing much, really. I just need to tell her all the stuff that's happened to me since we split. And since I can't speak to her anymore in reality... Mr. Donnelly, I don't think this is a very good idea. Oh, come on, Stephen. It'll be fun. And I'll bet you've never even had an ounce of fun on one of these graveyard shifts. Only once. What was that? I said this could be very dangerous for us. Maybe, but only for me. I mean, you've got nothing to fear. Look at the condition I'm in. I'm harmless. So, did I dump you after you told me about the assault in Baltimore? You know, because I figured you weren't man enough for me anymore. Pretty good. No, you waited another week until Hartford. You were an actress, and you were doing a national tour of Hello Dolly at the time. We shared an apartment together in New York, and I visited you on weekends. Some, sometimes, I think I don't love you. At but then I think about us breaking up and I start to cry. <laughs> Maybe it's something I just need to work on. What was odd though was that when we woke up the next morning, you attacked me. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh! Oh! Oh my god! Oh! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh! Yes! 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 God, God, dude, we do have great sex. <laughs> Especially when I get on top there, that always does it. Yeah. You alright? Yeah. Okay, let's take a shower. I want to get something to eat, I'm starving. But then two days later, you came back to New York and laid the hammer down. So when can you move out? I don't know, Agnes. Jesus, can I die just being dumped first? Normally I'd say yes, but I'm on the road and I have to move pretty quickly on this. Well, yeah, you're on the road and you're not here. That should give me more time. It's not like we're going to be together. I'm sorry. But I have to put this behind me and with you here, I can't do that. This is my apartment, remember? I know it's your apartment, Agnes, but as you know, I don't have a lot of money right now. But you have to leave. Look, I, I'm not unreasonable. I can, I, I can, I can give you till April 1st. That's only five weeks. How am I going to get the money together and find a suitable apartment in this city in five weeks? I don't know, Jude, but people do it. Oh my God, what did you do? I went out and got a dark room. You mean you went out and got a dark, dingy hotel room? No, no. I mean, the next day I went out and literally bought an entire photographic dark room set. So, what did I do? When you came home with all that equipment. Actually, you had already gone back on the road that morning, which gave me the freedom to set all that stuff up right in the middle of your apartment. You didn't dare. I can't believe if you were going to leave in five weeks why you bothered setting up all that equipment in my apartment. I needed something to divert my attention immediately, baby. You destroyed me. Why didn't you just buy some drugs or get a hooker? Vous êtes magnifique, ma chérie. J'ai très envie de faire un mot avec toi toute la nuit. Viens ici, laisse-moi t'embrasser. Oh my God! You're a man! Man, woman, 
It is only what we see in our minds that counts. How about what our eyes see? What do your eyes see? You mean you cheated on me with a man? I didn't cheat. We were already broken up. But it was still my apartment you were living in. Hey, I was paying half the rent. No, but it was my lease. And I'm assuming that the bed you had this tryst in was still my bed. Yeah, it was your bed. You're doing very well, by the way. What do you mean I'm doing well? At playing her. You're becoming quite convincing. Well, you're becoming quite despicable. How could you do such a thing? How could I do such a thing? How could you kick me out on such short notice like that? I mean, for God's sakes, I ended up out in Queens in a one-room serial killer basement special. The fella who's living here now isn't moving out because he's unhappy with the apartment. He's moving out because he has some problems up here, if you know what I mean. Oh, I mean he's not the frothing uh, at the mouth lunatic type or anything. He's just having a tough time right now. Are you in there? The man is here to look at the apartment. Lenny! It's all right, sweetheart. It's just me and that man I told you about. Hi, Lenny. Uh, see, it's just me and that man. Don't be scared, dear. And then my landlady's boyfriend had some kind of auto repair business that he ran out of the garage. And he had all of these power tools that took up a lot of electricity. So four or five times a day, suddenly the power would go out. Oh. And then when the power went out, the large family had this large Siberian Damn husky it. named Nanook Damn who was it. very nice. But when the power went out, the dog would freak out and come into my apartment to hide. Well, how did he get in? Well, my apartment only took up half of the basement. The other half still belonged to the family. And there was a door that couldn't close all the way between us. In fact, some mornings I'd wake up and find the dog sleeping in my shower. Nanook, I gotta get in there. Come on. <laughs> but the dog wasn't the only unexpected visitor I had. The neighborhood wasn't exactly the most photogenic place. Hey! Hey, douchebag! Hey, douchebag! What? What are you taking pictures of that garbage for? You with the Daily News or something? No, no. These pictures are not for the press. So then what are you taking pictures of that garbage for, you nuts? These pictures are for art galleries. Art galleries buy pictures of garbage? Yeah, sometimes, okay? Oh uh, yeah, well, did you sell any yet? I didn't think so. <laughs> hey, hey, come on, like, why don't you take pictures of uh, the skyline on me instead, you know? I'm not that ugly. Hey, look, I'm trying to concentrate here, all right? You mind? Hey, yeah, 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 no problem, man. No need to get testy, all right? I was just trying to help you out a bit, okay? That sounds pretty frightening. Not to mention depressing and lonely. Did you have any kind of love life out there? Or were you still hung up on me? 
No, I mean, you know, I was hurting for you, but I did manage to hook up with some women through the restaurant I was working in. Not that they helped much. So, uh, you guys all set? I can uh, fill that up for you. Oh, no. We've had enough. <laughs> That's for sure. Here you go. It's all set. Thanks. <laughs> what? Wait, did I, uh, did I do something silly? Oh, no, you're fine. Okay, well, um, have a good day. You too. Dear Mr. Waiter, I just scored a great apartment and I feel my luck is running high. Maybe you could add to my lucky streak by giving me a call tonight. Here's my number, Deborah. Hey, Jay. Yeah? You didn't happen to catch the names of those two women who just left, did you? No, I didn't. That young one was really something. Tell me about it. And check this out. You know which one left it? No, no I don't. But uh, I know which one you're hoping to be Deborah. Oh, yeah, you best. <laughs> but the other one wasn't a waste of time. Especially your time. I'll bet the first thing you're wondering is which one of us left you that note. Oh, I mean, it's not that big a deal, but, uh, yeah, I was wondering, sure. Well, and the slightly older one, you know, with the strawberry blonde hair. Oh, right, right. Yeah, that's who I thought it was. I mean, the other girl... You wish it was her, don't you? No, no, no. In fact, I was about to say that she was a little young. So, anyway, do you want to get together with me sometime? Sure. Okay. You mean you went out with her even though she wasn't the one you wanted? Well, you know, I did think she was attractive. But not gorgeous. No, but then again, I went out with a lot of women who I didn't think were gorgeous. Did you think I was gorgeous? Sure. <sighs> That's not very convincing. Well, maybe not drop dead gorgeous at first, but eventually you lit me up anyway. Baby, I was mad for you. But not mad the way a woman wants to be mad for. Ah, oh, no, you have it all wrong. The truth is, is that I fell hard for you and cast my eyes and the rest of my body passionately upon you as often as humanly possible, baby. You did? Do you miss doing that? Of course. Hmm. What? Interesting. Yeah, well, let's get back to the story. I see that guy over there? Hey, douchebag! Oh, jeez, yeah, unfortunately. Well, I was in line for the ladies' room and we started talking. And I said to him that I was on this really hot date with this, this really cute guy and things were going good. But for some reason, he hasn't even tried to kiss me yet. And you know what he said to me? I would have kissed you the moment I saw you. What do you think of that? Dude, hey, hey, dude, I just have to say something. You know, I, I had it really pretty tough last year, but it's okay because this night has been so totally fantastic, and you, you are the best thing that's happened to me in years. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's great, Deborah. That, that's really nice. Um, you know, I, I like you too, but, uh, Remember, this is just our first date, right? I know, I know, but if you really something special, I can tell. And then on the very next date, she introduces me to her father. Dude, there's somebody here I want you to meet. Dad, this is Jude, the guy I can't shut up about. That's right, she hasn't stopped talking about you all week. How are you, slugger? Oh, it's uh, nice to meet you, uh, sport. <laughs> hey, after we suck this round down, would the two of you like to hit up this frat party with me? 
Dad! I really think we want to spend some time alone together after this. You okay with that, Jude? <sighs> you know, you're the first guy I've ever been out with who didn't start pawing at my breast as soon as he had the chance. Look, Deborah. I I'm sorry. No need to apologize. Just come on, get more aggressive, that's all. <laughs> No, 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 Deborah, Deborah, look, look, to be honest, I'm still kind of hung up on my old girlfriend. So, mister, just because you have a great ass doesn't mean you're so perfect. First of all, you're losing your hair, and second of all, you're a waiter! I bet you still wouldn't have been hung up on me, I mean the young one who came on to you so strong. Yes, I would have, I still ached for you. Really? Well, what about that other girl? Susanna, right? Yeah. How you doing, Jude? Great, great, man. Whatever happened to you? You never came back to work at the restaurant. Oh, Matt didn't hire me. He thought I was too slow. Well, you know what? I was about to go uh, get some coffee. What are you up to? Oh, I've got to go pick up some keys for this apartment I'm about to sublet. Oh, is the apartment in Manhattan? Yeah, it's on East 27. I had to move out to Queens in a one-room basement Rosh Kalnikov special, and I was looking for over a month. Sounds pretty severe. Yeah, well, that's the kind of luck I've had lately. Well, don't let it get you too down. Luck can change at any moment, especially if you keep your eyes open for the right opportunity. Oh. Oh, okay. All right. Um, would you like to go out sometime? So where did you say you lived? East 27. You're in Queens, right? Yeah. Yeah, I gotta get on the end train. Well, Russ Kalnikov, if you'd like, you could uh, come back to my place for a little while. Really? Yeah, really. Actually, before you come back, there is something I should tell you first. What? I feel kind of embarrassed, though. Oh, well, if you're embarrassed, you don't have to tell me. Okay. Actually, I feel kind of guilty not telling you, though. Do you have a boyfriend? No, it's not that. It's just... Well, look, you know, if you're embarrassed or uncomfortable, just tell me later. Okay. That was great. That was great. I, I can't ever remember having a first date go this well. Though, I gotta admit, you had me a little worried out there on the street when you told me you had something to tell me. Wow, I mean, with the luck I've had lately, I thought you were gonna end up having a male sex organ. It's nothing that extreme. Yeah, well, I sure know that now, don't I? Anyway, I mean, you know, if you're feeling comfortable, you can tell me now if you like. Gee, now I don't know if I want to tell you because I don't want to spoil such a great date. Oh, look, as long as you don't have male genitalia, you can't spoil this evening. Mm -mm. You sure? Positive. Okay. I'm a whore. No, you're not. Just because you sleep with a guy on the first date, that's a nonsense. No, I don't mean it that way. I mean, I'm really a whore. I work for an escort service. No, but you, you went to Colgate. And he lived abroad. Actually, I got started with this abroad. I hear it's tough getting a job in Hungary. No. I had another job, too. I started escorting for the extra money. And it's sort of exciting. Really? Yeah. Well, not so much the men that you have to escort, but just the fact that you have to go meet them at all these secret places and parties. There's something thrilling about it. I see. Do you think you can untie me now? I knew I shouldn't have told you. It still must have been a big boost to your libido, you know, having a whore take you home for your, her own recreational purposes. I suppose it should have been, but at the time, the whole experience just put me on edge for a while. Don't tell me to get the fuck out of here. This is your fault, so fuck you. What? I said, fuck you. You threw a plate at me, you Nazi bastard! 
Get, get out here, you zing hao fuck! What did you call me? I called you a zing hao fuck! Now, now, take it easy! And a couple of days later, I got fired over it. What did you do for money? Well, I had a little bit saved by this time. Plus, I had my visa grant. So instead of looking for work, I decided to leave New York altogether. I mean, I figured with the luck I was having, the sooner the better, right? Packing up everything and moving to Washington, D.C. sounds pretty extreme, if you ask me. Oh, actually, I didn't go to Washington then. That comes later. First, I moved to Vermont. Why Vermont? Actually, you've been there. I have? When? A couple of years ago with me. We spent this weekend up there at this great little b and It was the most intimate two days of our relationship. Did I tie you up like Susanna did? No. It was a different kind of intimacy. Was it this far away? Is it closer like this? Um, sort of. So you got into a fight with the chef from work, and you decided to move to Vermont, right? Well, well, actually, uh, before I moved to Vermont, I made a quick pit stop up at my parents' house up in Albany, New York, to get some things together. I don't fully understand this. You say you're moving back here for three weeks, and then in three weeks you're moving to Vermont? Yes, Mom, that's what I said. Well, that's crazy. Why don't you just move right to Vermont from New York? Because I need to buy a car here first. Why they don't sell cars in Vermont? Vermont's a rural state, Dad. How can I go look for a car if I don't have one to take me around? Well, maybe you could rent one, couldn't you? I don't even know where in Vermont I'm gonna be staying yet. Oh, we got us a real planner here, Jay, huh? Uh, Dad, Dad, look, I got a plan, all right? Tomorrow, I figured I'd drive up to Killington and case out the employment situation there. If that doesn't look promising, the next day, I'll drive to Stratton. Yeah, and if that don't work out, we're gonna be driving to on Monday, Aspen. <laughs> well, how are you gonna do all this driving when you don't even have a car? I thought I'd borrow one of yours. Beautiful, eh? We got a 32-year-old man here who wants to borrow his dad's car. Hey, do you realize when Bill Clinton was 32 years of age, he was elected governor? Well, I guess I'm not Bill Clinton, Dad. Oh, you're sure not. You sure not borrow my car, either. Okay, now, I took this car off the road a couple of months ago. So, you're not going to be able to take it on the highway for a test drive. What do you mean? What I mean is there are no plates. See? No plates. Well, to be honest, Mr. Green, I, I don't think I can buy something without taking it for a test drive. I know that. I, I figured just take it for a drive around the lot here a few times. You're, you're kidding. No, I'm not kidding. There's not any grass. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Well, because that's such a funny story. No, it's not. It's a pathetic story. Why ever let it get as far as a test drive is beyond me? Because you have a good heart. A kind, sweet, gentle heart. Why are you crying? Because it's stuff like that that reminds me of how much I love you. But you don't love me. You dump me like a bad habit. But maybe I made a mistake. In fact, I know I did. Just tell me what I gotta do to prove that to you. Look, if you feel you made such a big mistake, then why are you back in New York and not here with me? I am here. I'm right here standing over you, Jude, and I want you back. Broken arms and all. I want you right now. 
No. You're not here. You are a substitute, remember? But don't you want me to be her? Yes, I want you to be her, but you're not her. You're becoming way too coddling. Agnes would never do that. She was a strong, determined, tough, opinionated woman. Mm. That doesn't sound very attractive to me. Well, I admired her determination. I even found it sexy. I could play her that way. Anything to become more involved. All right. But what I really need you to do is just listen. Okay. I'm listening. Hello? Hello? How did you know which city my show was playing in? Oh, you were back in New York now. Your show was running on Broadway. My show went to Broadway? Well, was it a hit? Well, it was a revival of a proven hit starring the original lead. You mean to tell me? All this time, I've been touring in a revival of Hello, Dolly! with, dare I say, Carol Channing? Yeah. You mean... You, you, you mean... The Carol Channing? Yeah, who else? Oh, Mr. Dolly, I, I, I really want to be your ex-girlfriend. Well, you are being her. No, 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 I mean I really want to be your ex-girlfriend. I don't want to pretend anymore. I mean, it's been a secret desire of my entire life to go to New York and be on Broadway and, and, and get to be a Broadway star. Well, Agnes was hardly a Broadway star. In fact, she was scarcely more than a chorus girl, and this had been her first theater job in three years. Mostly, she made her living doing these insipid voiceovers for television and radio. Yeah. That may be on the way I made my living most of the time. But it sure was several notches above you being a waiter wanna be photographer. At least I kept my art true to my soul. Soul! That's what every artistic failure hides behind. If you saw the work that I've done since we've split, you'd hardly be calling me a failure. What have you sold any of it? A couple of pieces. But what does that matter? Van Gogh never sold anything in his life. Look at the wonderful life that this Mr. Van Gogh led. No, look at the wonderful art he left the world. No, look at the life he led. Is that the life you want? Because from the looks of things, that's exactly the direction you're headed in. No. For the first time this evening, I've begun to see why I dumped you. What a loser attitude. No, I have a truly artistic attitude. Yeah, and it was this artistic attitude that led you away from the liveliest, most cultured city in the world to some little farmhouse in the middle of the woods somewhere, wasn't it? It wasn't in the middle of the woods. It was in the town of Manchester. And, and I wasn't so alone after a while either. I was meeting people through the restaurant I was working in. Uh-huh. And I'm sure these people 
were exactly the kind of influence that every burgeoning artist needs to have around them. Excuse me, Jude. Hi. Hi, how you doing? Didn't mean to startle you. Um, this is Kenny. I don't know if you've had a chance to meet. He opens up for us in the morning and he cleans up. Have you met? Oh, no. No, I haven't. Uh, hi, Kenny. Hello, Jude. Okay, Kenny, hon, you can take off if you want. Okay, bye, Kate. Bye, Jude. Bye, uh, Kenny. That's great. That's great. Okay, here's the situation. Kenny is very sweet. Very, very hardworking. A little slow. Uh -huh. Yeah. And if you ever see him with his hat to the side so his brim is like over here, that means he wants attention from you. He's needy. Needy and slow. Needy and slow. And uh, have you met Eric in the kitchen? No. He's under house arrest. Yeah. Yeah. A lot going on. I'm telling you, Kenny, I learned my lesson this time. You'll never catch me shooting a bottle rocket at a cop again. <laughs> well, that's just heartwarming, Eric, really. Hi, Kate. Hi, Eric. What's going on, Kenny? Thought you were leaving. Okay, Kate, I'm leaving now. Bye. Okay, bye, Kenny. Uh, Jude, I'd like you to meet Eric. Eric, this is Jude. Hi. Hi. Wave. Bye, Kenny. So how you doing, Jude? Oh, uh, I'm doing good. How are you? Not bad considering. You ever been on house arrest before? Um, no. Don't ever try it, dude. It sucks. Okay, that's, that's great to know, Eric. Thank you. Uh, listen, why don't we get back to work? We've got a restaurant to open, and I think I hear a car coming in. Let's get back to work. God, I hate that howling bitch sometimes. Sometimes I'd like to take this knife and chop her up in little pieces and put her in a deep fryer and serve her as chicken wings. Is, uh, is that a fact? Probably not. Just a fantasy of mine. But everyone has a right to dream, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. So you ever wrap a cat up in a burlap sack and throw it through your neighbor's window? All right, so maybe I wasn't meeting the right people. But I was doing some great work up there. Fuck, I need to get back out on the road. What on earth for? To finish America's Lost Highways. Listen, dude. It sounds like you might have talent. But do you honestly believe that a series of photographs of old country highways with cracked pavement is going to bring you any kind of commercial success? Let me tell you something. That cracked pavement is a metaphor for every American dream whose continuity has been broken. In what way? In the way that all of us had big dreams at one point in our life, but 99% of the time while pursuing those dreams, something causes the wheels to fall off and we settle for something less. And that's what made the tire fall off your trooper. No, baby. You were my cracked pavement. But let me tell you something, when I get out of here, that camera of mine is going to put that tire back on again. Now ask me, were there any other women who worked there? Who worked where? At the restaurant in Vermont. Do you have any tattoos? Where'd that come from? I don't know, I'm bored and uh, could give me something to do, you know? If you had something, you could show it to me. My cafe mount, you dumbass! I ordered the thing over a half hour ago! You half dick! I have one right here. On my bicep. You're from Vermont and you've never been skiing. That's right. Wow. Did you ever leave town? On occasion. Once a month my mother goes down to Bennington to shop. Sometimes I join her. We live together. You live with your mother? I have one in here. Where? Mm. My shoulder. I know, Jude. I'm a moderately attractive young girl who could be a much more attractive young girl if only I put some effort into it. But my snowboarding boyfriend left me, my yuppie parents hate me, and I'm behind on my car payments. So what's the point? And... I have one.
right here. That's my favorite one. I don't care about that. I want to talk about something else. In fact, I bet you're just the kind of guy that would like to marry a virgin, aren't you? No, not necessarily. I wouldn't be opposed to the idea. I mean, in some sick, twisted Freudian way, isn't that every man's fantasy? That's interesting. Why? Because I'm a virgin. Why are you telling me that? I guess I'm just trying to open things up a little. But you're not supposed to be talking about yourself. You're supposed to be playing another character. But I don't want to do that anymore either, Mr. Donnelly. Listen, I don't want to talk about other women, and I don't want to play your big-ass girlfriend. But that's what I need from you. No, what you need, Mr. Donnelly, is the truth. And the truth is that she never loved you. And when she realized it, she let you go. How would you know? You just said you've never even experienced intimacy. I've been waiting for the real thing to come. It sounds to me like you're waiting your entire life for miracles to happen. My miracle has happened, Mr. Donnelly. The person I love has come into my life. Let's hope so, Stephen, because until you lose your virginity, you don't know what a miracle is. No, Mr. Donnelly, the only person in this room that doesn't know about true miracles is you. And the reason your life is caught up in this voodoo story is because deep down inside, you're looking for your one true miracle. Which is why I can't play her anymore. Because she was not it. Yes, she was, and I was hers. It just got messed up is all. Now look, if you don't want to play her anymore, that's fine. But I need to go over this just the same, and I need you to listen. You do need me to listen. Because what lies ahead for you, if you don't overcome this, is far more tragic than anything you've ever been through. Oh, how would you know? Well, I can see your life in Vermont was extremely isolated and that you struggle to surround yourself with people of similar cultivation. Hi. Your name's Big Daddy. That's what it says. Hmm, that's interesting. Of course, I'm guessing you got a real name too, right? What do you think? Well, I, I think that you probably do. Smart cookie. Thanks. Thanks. You mind telling me what it is? Paul. But I don't ever want to hear you say it here. Oh, sure, sure. I, you know, I can totally respect that. I don't need to respect it. I just don't want to hear you saying it. Understood. Understood. So, I'm, uh, I'm guessing you got this name Big Daddy from Cat in a Hot Tin Roof, huh? What? The name, Big Daddy. It's from that Tennessee Williams play, Cat in a Hot Tin Roof. I don't know where it came from. Oh, oh, well, you see Tennessee Williams, the playwright? He wrote this play called Cat in a Hot Tin Roof. I don't know who you're talking about, but in a minute, I'm gonna take a cat, a tin roof, and the entire state of Tennessee and shove it up your puny little ass. Now that's something you better respect, you got it? Yeah, yeah, no problem. I'll get out of here. Sure, no, no problem. Hey, you're a uh, old dog, huh? I can also see why this isolation caused you to contact Agnes again. Hello? Agnes, hello. Um, look, the, the reason why I'm calling is that I'm doing my taxes and I'm gonna write off a portion of my rent as a business expense, you know, because of my darkroom. So, I'm just wondering, you know, if you could write me out a rent receipt for the month that I had the darkroom in your apartment. Is that really necessary? If I ever got audited, sure. Jude, you make less than $15,000 a year. I doubt you're ever gonna get audited. Besides, how much of a write-off could it be? Uh, a couple hundred dollars. And how much would that actually save you on your taxes? I don't know, 20 bucks? She never sent you the rent receipt, did she? No. And yet you still continued to make the phone calls, right? How do you know? It's written all over you. And the phone calls became more and more bizarre, didn't they? Hello. Okay. I'm sorry? Okay. okay, this is pretty strange. Money. It's the only thing that matters. Money. It's the only thing that matters.
Hello. Of course you knew it was you. I don't think so at first. And besides, I only did it a few times while I was in Vermont anyway. Once I got it in my mind that I wanted to move to D.C., I got so preoccupied with that that I stopped calling. But going to D.C. turned out to be just another diversion. And once the isolation settled in, you started making the phone calls again, didn't you? That's only partially true. Yes, the isolation settled in again. But my decision to go to Washington had nothing to do with any diversions. My decision to go to D.C. was purely artistic. Oh, please. Why would any artist live in D.C. when they could live in New York? I don't know. Why did Van Gogh move to Arles instead of staying in Paris? Uh, because he was insane, Mr. Donnelly? Hey, stop pissing on Vincent. I'm not pissing on Vincent. I feel sorry for the man, as I should. Because, as you well know, after Arles, he ended up in an insane asylum in saint Remy, where he committed suicide. And something equally tragic is in store for you if you can't face the reality of what you're running from. I'm not running away from anything. I'm running towards becoming an artist. By taking pictures of our national shrines like a common tourist? The monuments in D.C. were the furthest thing from my artistic itinerary. Well, what did this artistic itinerary have you take pictures of? The Beltway. The what? The Beltway! The highway that wraps around Washington. You're joking, right? There's no way you moved all the way down to D.C. to take pictures of the Washington Beltway. Yes, I did. In fact, I also planned to photograph the Baltimore Beltway, too. <laughs> My working title for the series was... A Tale of Two Beltways. Okay, Mr. Donnelly, now I know what you're running from. <laughs> what? You're gay. What? You're gay! Hey, fuck you! Oh no, Mr. Donnelly! You are queer! Why? Because I take pictures of highways, Stephen? Nah! Because the only possible explanation for this kind of irrational thinking is deeply rooted sexual repression. And since you obviously are familiar with women, the only other conclusion could possibly be is that what you really want is a man. And since you can't admit that to yourself, you just keep driving on and on and on, filling your time with aimless ambition. Oh, how the fuck would you know? You're just some hick nurse. Because until tonight, I was hiding from the very same thing. Oh, give me a break. I knew you were gay the moment I first saw you. How did you know? By the way you walk and talk and act, and believe me, you didn't just pick up these affectations tonight. But I waited for my miracle to come. And until it did, I wasn't sure. But tonight... My miracle came, and I'm busted. Back off here. If I hear you say to me what I think you want to say to me, that's going to put me completely over the edge. But you are over the edge, Mr. Donnelly. That's why I've got to say what I've got to say. No, Stephen. No, you don't. Mr. Donnelly, it's no use. I love you. Stop it, Stephen! I can't stop, Mr. Donnelly. It's true. I love you with all of the oxygen in my blood. I love you with the marrow in my bones. No, Stephen, no! Jude, it's true. I love you. I love you the way Anthony loved Cleopatra, the way Napoleon loved Josephine. I'm willing to risk it all. Let them do with me as they may. The truth is out. The time has come. Brace yourself, Mr. Donnelly. Brace yourself real good. I'm going to kiss you over and over and over. Well, how's our patient here? Has the fog cleared yet? I, I, I believe it's about to, Doctor. Is that so, Jude? Stephen, this patient's not conscious. Oh, no. Mr. Donnelly. Mr. Donnelly, wake up. I'm not fucking gay. I'll admit, yes, I've had sexual thoughts concerning men. I even slept with a cross-dressing one once, but I didn't know he was gay until later. And besides, he was French. And sleeping with a Frenchman does not make you gay. Stephen, what have you two been talking about? Shut up, doctor. I'm not through. Now look, I support the gay community. In fact, the straw that broke the camel's back for me in Vermont had to do with gay slander. But right now, in this moment, I miss you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Um, this next song is also about loss, but not loss in the eternal sense. Um, the kind of loss that I'm referring to is more the kind of loss that we experience here on Earth. And 
Uh, of course, I mean divorce. No, no, no. What, 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 wait, wait, wait. What are you cheering at? I mean, divorce is an ugly thing, right? In fact, a couple of years ago, I was at this party. And after a while, it dawned on me that I was the only person in that room who hadn't yet been through a divorce. Yeah, it's because you're gay! <laughs> yeah. But just the same, I know that I want to spend the rest of my life with a woman. I want this so badly that it's probably the thing that screwed me up the last three years. I, I'm possessed by this false ideal, eternal love. But, but I simply refuse to settle for anything less. Yes, Mr. Donnelly, that's fine. Now, can you count to ten for me? I don't need to count to ten, Doctor. My consciousness is quite clear. I'm sorry, Mr. Donnelly, but I beg to differ. Just a moment ago, you were out completely. I was faking, Doctor. I was simply trying to block out something I didn't want to hear. Something Stephen was trying to say? Yes. Was he accusing you of being a homosexual? He was trying to help me, I think. I see. Stephen, what did I specifically tell you earlier? Well, you said to play along with it. What else did I specifically tell you? I'm sorry, Doctor. Yes, well, this is the lacrosse player all over again. And if it weren't for the lack of qualified nurses in this town, you would be out of a job. I understand. No, I'm not sure that you do. Now, has it gone to the point you have told Mr. Donnelly that you love him? Wonderful. Well, luckily, we have another nurse coming on duty soon who can replace you. Until then, I want you to apologize to Mr. Donnelly emphatically. Then just do your job, which is simply to listen and then keep him alert. Okay, doctor. Stephen, I'm sorry. No, Mr. Donnelly, there's no need for you to apologize. I'm the one who's sorry. Why should you be sorry? You've only been trying to help me. No, that's not true. My intentions have been quite selfish, really. And I, I'd like to apologize to you. Why? Because I've been trying to seduce you all evening long. Seduce me? Come on, Stephen. Give me a break. You wouldn't know where to begin. You're a virgin. Actually, that's not true, Mr. Donnelly. I've been sexually active for over two decades now. Really? Yeah. Wow. This is becoming as bizarre as anything from my voodoo play. But I've got to admit, you have helped me. No, Mr. Donnelly. I have misled you. For my own amusement. Maybe, but in doing so, you have helped me identify that thing that's been screwing up my life all these years. This false ideal, eternal love, it doesn't exist, does it? Nothing on this earth is eternal. So when the good things come into our lives, we've got to learn to enjoy them. But when it's time to let them go, we have to let them go. Otherwise their memory will destroy us. But what if I can't let go? And what if I can get back what I lost? There is no chance. Otherwise you're going to be reliving your life in Vermont and Washington for the rest of your life. Washington, right. I never told you about that. Sorry, mister, but we're all out of honey roasted peanuts. Excuse me? We're all out of honey roasted peanuts. That's what you're looking for, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. How'd you know? Because you're in here every night, and that's what you always get. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, tonight you're out of luck. Oh. Well, um, will you be getting a new shipment of them in soon? I don't know. Probably. Oh, well, uh, until that time, how about me and you go out? What? You and me, let's go out. Regardless of when the peanuts come in. Get lost. Oh, come on. You don't mean that. <laughs> what the hell are you doing, sir? I want to kiss you. Get lost. I mean it. Oh, come I'm on. I'm going to call the cops. Get what? out. What? Come on. I mean it. Get out. Hey, hey, how you doing? 
How you doing tonight, huh? How are you, sweetheart? Mildred! Your kitty! Kitty, kitty! Come here. Yes. Yes, you're lonely just like me, aren't you? Hmm. Want to see where I live? Come on. I'll show you where I live. Excuse me, sir? Sir? What? Would it be all right if the kids had to look through your camera lens at your shot? When? When? Yeah, when? I'm sorry, I don't understand what you mean. I mean when, before or after I shove this camera up your ass. The knife is out! The knife is out! But soon... It'll go in! It will go in! Did you just throw something at that car? No. Yes, you did. I saw you. I'm 33 years old. Then why are you standing in the bushes? Just getting some air. <laughs> yeah, right. I am. The world's gone to hell in the handbasket. Is that when you decided to do this America's Lost Highway series? Yeah. Yeah, I knew I had to get out of D.C. But as you can see, this hasn't helped you much either, has it? Now listen. We don't have much time remaining together. And Dr. Gansey is going to replace me soon with another nurse. But I'd really like to take the time we have left to help convince you of how important it is to let go. Well, I don't know how you'll do it, but you can certainly give it a try. Look, if I show you what'll happen to you if you don't let go of your past, I know you're going to be convinced to let go of it. Yes? Agnes? It's Jude. Oh my god. Agnes? Jude, go away! But Eatsky, I've come such a long way to see you! Jude, go away. I mean it, you're in enough trouble already. Oh, but I love you. I need you. I'm gonna start yelling for help in a minute. Oh. Shit! Help! Ah! Oh, god damn it! Fucking bitch! You fucking bitch! Hold man. it right there! <sighs> but officer, like, you don't understand. She fucking ruined I'm me. I'm going to end you if you take a step towards her. Get down on the floor and put your hands behind your back. But officer, get on the fucking ground! Stop! But that's the direction you're headed in, Mr. Donnelly. I don't care, Stephen. I want you to stop. But only you can do that. You've got to let go. What if she made a mistake? But she didn't make a mistake, and you know that. You've just got to admit it to yourself. You've got to let reality be your closure. And the reality is that you're laid up in a hospital bed in Athens, Ohio, with two broken arms and a concussion. That you got in an automobile accident while running away from the problems and the pain that you can't confront. Now that is your present reality. Steven. No playing substitutes with this one. Talk to her as her own woman. And you may just find that you can become a new man. Steven, get away from him now. Have you no decency at all? Doctor, I was I just... don't want to hear it. Just get yourself over to the ice cube where even you wouldn't have the nerve to pull any such shenanigans. I apologize for Stephen's behavior, Mr. Donnelly. I'm most embarrassed by it. Oh, that's okay, Doctor. Um, like I said, he was just trying to help. Hello. I'm Jude. Hi, I'm Claire. Claire? That's, that's a beautiful name. Thank you. Jude's nice, too. Well, I see that the two of you are going to get along just fine, which is a good thing, since it's imperative we keep Mr. Donnelly conscious and alert. So in that case, I'll leave the two of you and check back in about an hour or so, okay? Okay. okay. It's 
so the doctor tells me you were in an accident that uh, apparently a tire fell off your car yeah yeah that's true but I don't want to talk about my car I'd much rather talk about yours my car why because I bet it takes people to good places or mine only takes people to places where they don't belong well When I first got out of nursing school, my car did take me to Yellowstone National Park. That was a really great place. Excellent, Claire. Excellent. Let's get into your car and go to Yellowstone. I've never been, and nothing could keep me awake and alert like the adventure of a new experience.